the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, the Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity in one God, have mercy on us. May we understand your holy will. Grant our prayer. May we realize our true relationship with you in this life and the life to come. Grant our prayer. May we continue to work with you in building your kingdom on earth. Grant our prayer. May we unite ourselves with you in the sacred mystery of the altar. Grant our prayer. May we recognize the greatness of this most holy sacrifice through which we worship you. Grant our prayer. May we need of the bread of life no more to hunger. Grant our prayer. May we have a share in the offering of Jesus on the cross. Grant our prayer. May we fill our lives with your ideas. Be joined with you in the suffering of the Lord. Grant our prayer. May we receive always and everywhere your all pervading presence. Grant our prayer. May we end our days with your holy name in our hearts and on our lips. Grant our prayer. Forgive our sins, O God. Grant our prayer. Cleanse and renew our hearts. Grant our prayer. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Good morning, and uh, it's uh, now the last summer Sunday, and still kind of a little bit humid and sticky, and uh, hopefully next week when we come back in fall, it'll be a little bit nicer. Uh, one of the last things that we do here at Holy Name of Jesus in the summer is we have our youth retreat, and I come back and I tell you how, how good those kids are, and you know, they could get into a lot of trouble, and yet they don't. And then uh, this morning as I'm walking into church, Alice Majeski gives me this, uh, this article from the newspaper that they uh, found 47 mature pot plants worth $140,000 out in the woods by where we go for our youth retreat. <laughs> and so all those times that I thought our kids were just laid back and cool, <laughs> uh, now I know why, $140,000 worth of pot up there in the DNR State Forest. So, but just kidding, our kids are perfect. They never would touch that kind of stuff. So anyway, we do gather today, and today is the first Sunday of our School of Christian Living classes, and uh, that all begins after Mass this morning, and we uh, do hope that that's going to be a, a very productive year for all of those uh, young people. And we also want to thank our students, I mean our teachers, because they give up their time Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, and uh, we do appreciate that very much. It's all volunteer time. Uh, so as we do gather now for the celebration of this Mass, I ask you to please make a private examination of your conscience. Lord, hear us. Let us pray. 
Grant to us, gracious Father, that with purity of heart we may worthily fulfill this holy action, establish the remembrance of the Last Supper and the death of Jesus Christ, and for our sanctification and salvation. Be present among us, Jesus, our most perfect Master, because you said there were two or three are gathered together in my name, and you are among them. We also ask you, Lord, that through this holy liturgy you may experience a spiritual revival and a better understanding of your holy will, bringing us together in one great family, guided by your commandments and by love, truth, and justice. And may we all say together, let us praise the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, indivisible, revealed and triune God for all time, now, and forever. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to the Son, Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. steward for acting so prudently. 
For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. I tell you, make friends of yourselves or for yourselves with dishonest wealth, so that when it fails, you may be welcomed into the eternal dwelling. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with great wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. You will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Really, really beautiful. And as I have a tendency to say, tendency to say, 
when I'm in that kind of a situation, there are women present, I told them, I don't think childbirth and all of that women stuff is all that difficult to handle. Well, you can imagine Lynette and Sharon's answer to that statement of mine. And then Lynette said at the end of our conversation, you guys are lucky because you don't have any of that. At this point, Brandon, quietly, as they were taking his vitals, monitoring his heart, all in preparation in this hospital city to have open heart surgery the next day, Brandon says on the other side of the room with a big smile, oh yeah, I feel real lucky. And the way he said it, and when he said it, it was just the most perfect comeback I had ever heard. So anyway, finally, the point of all this, I'm chit-chatting with Angela Graves back there after paying for my hot sausages over at the Millstone Market. And the other cashier tells me the joke that one day, God was looking down on earth and he saw all of this bad behavior that was going on. So he called over one of his angels and sent that angel to come down to earth for a time. When he returned, he told God, yeah, it's bad done. 95% are misbehaving and only 5% are being good. God thought for a moment, he said, it can't be that bad, so maybe I better send down another angel to check things out. So God calls over a second angel, sends her down to earth, and she goes down for her time, and then she comes back, and she says to God, yeah, it's true, there is, earth is in decline. 95% are misbehaving, maybe 5% are good. God is not happy. So he decides to send an email to the 5% who are good down on earth because he wants to encourage them to give them a little bit of extra hope, to give them something to keep going against the 95%. Anyone here know what that email to the good people was? Okay, I guess none of you got it either. <laughs> so tell her I use that. So there have been crooked and deceitful people on this earth for as long as there's been the Bible. And who would be surprised amongst us to say that there have always been crooked and deceitful people, and sadly there probably always will be. Somehow, some way, there are people who will find a way to cheat and take advantage of others, and they don't have the slightest twinge of conscience. God calls these sorts of people an abomination in today's opening prayer, a prayer that didn't come from my lips, that came from yours at the beginning of Mass. And I don't know if it's a full 95%, as we said in the last joke, but we all know that there are more than enough not nice people in the world to keep all of the Massachusetts state cops and all of the other cops busy. And that can wear down the 5%, even if none of us got God's email. I heard a report in the news about the leaders of a desperately poor nation. I think the youngest country in the world, the country of South Sudan, the leaders are hoarding gross sums of money for themselves and they have just turned from fighting an unjust government, and now they themselves have become an unjust government. What is it about money? So that universally, as soon as it's out there, people become despicable. How do some people have no conscience when it comes to wealth? You know, these people who are trying to help other people, they're, they're like, you know, neighbors, they're fighting together, they're friends, they're relatives, and all of a sudden, they get into a position where now they can take money, and the same people who are comrades in arms, who are neighbors, who are fighting the same oppressive government, now they can steal their money, and their conscience doesn't say a word. They see all the suffering around them, but they steal from the poorest of the poor, taking what little they have to amass gross amounts of money for themselves. It's disturbing, it's disgusting, and it's disheartening. Sharon and I were in Boston on Monday and Tuesday down around the downtown crossing. There were so many people there who were begging, who were homeless, who were definitely mentally ill. I worry about giving them anything on the street because you don't know who the con artist is and who is really hungry. You don't know, even if you give it to some person, what they're going to do with it because you can tell that some of them just aren't stable. And giving them spare change is also not the answer to the problem either. We as a society need to take care of those who cannot take care of themselves. And as Jesus says today, if only, if only the good people of the earth were as, as imaginative as the crooks in the cheese. If only we could be as creative as all of those scoundrels who are so willing to take the last cent from a poor guy. If we could only be as creative as they are, says Jesus, we'd be so much better off. But these problems have always been around, and sadly, they probably always will be. That's why we need to come to church sometimes. 
not to hear the obvious, that there is so much to do, but to just find a place of comfort, find a place of encouragement, to come here and to be able to recharge our spiritual batteries so that we can actually try to make a difference and to maybe enjoy God's company here and the company of each other as good people so that we can come here to be uplifted, to then go out there and try to make a difference. Maybe this can make that choice between choice between God and man just a little bit better. Maybe it can tilt a little bit more towards God because God knows there's a slew of people out there choosing man. That we may find God's encouragement here so that somehow, some way, we can take on all of the crooked, the deceitful, and all of the ones who don't have that slightest twinge of conscience out there who make this life so miserable. Let us hope that coming here gives us the ability and the inspiration and that just uplifting spirit so that we can actually make a difference out there, that we will not let them win, even if it is 95 to 5%. For this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty Lord, as we gather before your altar, uh, this is the first Sunday of our School of Christian Living Day uh, classes, we ask you, Lord, to be with our teachers and to be with our young families and also with the students, that they may count Christian education as important in their lives. We ask you also, Lord, as this time we pray for Barbara Bork, uh, who is in the hospital with a brain aneurysm. Um, we're all a second prayer. We are praying for a speedy recovery for the same Barbara Bork who is at UMass Memorial and is offered by Linda and Louise Mahalski. We offer prayers for Eddie Santos for a speedy recovery as offered by Barbara Santos. We offer prayers for two fellow co-workers who are going through cancer treatments as offered by Linda Mahalski. We offer prayers for John Mashashik on the 10th anniversary of his death as offered by Mashashik, Mahalski, and Santos families. We offer prayers for Liz Bridgman, recently diagnosed with cancer, raising three young girls on her own, as offered by Cindy Benjamin. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for Brandon Poe, uh, that all of his uh, operations uh, over these past many days, and actually starting all the way back on Father's Day, uh, that this summer has been a long one, and hopefully it's been now coming to a successful conclusion. We offer you our prayers of thanks uh, for all of that. We ask that you keep him in your tender care, continue to be with his family to give them strength as well. We also offer uh, prayers for the following for all battling cancer. Meg Connors by Ellen and Don Skrosky. Randy Clemens by Grandmother Donnie Peronis. Carl Dickinson by Joe and Peg Kostyuk. Fathers Ray Drader, Jan Bielczyk, and Maurice Lizelle is offered by myself. For Richard Poe is offered by the Poe and Foster families. For two-year-old Jack uh, Sella is offered by Marianna Foster. And Frank Skrosky is offered by twin brother Don, Skrosky, Gates, and Kirk and Don families. Are there any other intentions that you would like to add to the congregation? Um, James Bickford, he died in a motorcycle accident a week ago today. Um, his wife, Rachel Lawrence, uh, grew up in Waverly, went to school with um, Archer. Uh, James Bickford? Yeah. Okay, for James Bickford. Any other intentions that you would like to offer? For all of these intentions, Lord, plus the private ones that we bring to you in the privacy of our thoughts, we also ask the Lord to bless each and every one of us here gathered, uh, to you and all those who are perished who are unable to be with us here today, and those who are perished who have chosen not to be with us here today. For these things together, Lord, we pray by sin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto them, the Lord. May they rest in peace.
Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation. Omniscient Father, receive the offering your people place now before you, 
and make us eager to share in the good things that you have given to us all. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Mine, which is your gift to me, 
because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these and other words of the Archpriest's prayer and holy fervor, the Savior took bread to his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, he again gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, mindful Lord, we your servants and your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, received from your own gifts and presence, a pure offering, a holy offering, and a immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the of eternal, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts were received with a joyful countenance as from him, who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith that they overcome for our souls the saving remedy. Humbly ask, Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity. Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting life, and to those that are in life straight from the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully short their sufferings, we ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints, who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy. And with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit.
intercession of the Blessed and Glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with the Blessed Apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our days, supported by the help of your mercy. May we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be pardoned from you. He lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may it be my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives, reigns with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Ever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon <clears throat> the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to be healed, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return to the Lord for all the graces that he has given me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. High praise will I call upon the Lord, who shall save all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but I will say the word, and I shall be healed. Body and the blood of Christ. Body and the blood of Christ. 
trusts in his riches will fall, but like green leaves, the just will flourish. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have fed us at your holy table and have blessed us with abundance. Help us to use our riches rightly and generously, so that having you to perishable things to your glory, we may at last gain the imperishable inheritance of your heavenly kingdom. Do you live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever? Father filled with enduring love. Thanks, Jesus. Thanks, Jesus. 